Hello, my name is Bob. Welcome to a short stop on pool. The first two racks of the week were pretty wide open racks, relatively easy. Not every rack is going to be like that, and that's the case this week. I'm going to show some failures as well, but this week the motto is keep fighting, even when things aren't going well or going the way that you would hope. This is my third break shot in a run of 85 that I scored a couple weeks ago. So at this point, I have 28 points, and it's not looking good because I've got the wrong angle on my break shot. You want to stroke this shot with a really powerful follow stroke on the cue ball. Send the cue ball to the side rail and back into the pack. This is a really difficult shot to judge because the cue ball is very likely to curve on its way into and out of the rail. It's going to be affected by the nap of the cloth, the amount of stroke you put on the ball, whether you have any intentional side English or unintentional quality of the rails, etc. Do not aim for the center of the pack on this shot. It's likely that that top spin on the cue ball is going to slow it down and you're just going to get stuck there. What you want to shoot for is to come back into the top of the rack. You want to hit the top half of that top ball so that the cue ball moves towards center table or towards the side rail. And really, you are not don't expect to get more than two or three balls open. Since this is a recovery break shot, your goal is not to spread the balls wide. You just want to make certain that you make the break ball and contact the rack. Hopefully, you'll get a ball or two loose, and you'll have an opportunity to re-break the rack. Something like this. Sorry, there's no pool sounds at times. I was recording in a pool hall, and I can't record the music because of music copyright. But this result is ideal. If I'm in a match, I'm going to play a safety off that solid near the side rail. As it is, I'm just going for a high run. And this stripe ball into the corner pocket is very cuttable, and I can break the rack from the bottom. Let's pause for a moment and think about that break shot and the shot that I'm facing right now. You know, I had run 28 points, and I had a very low percentage break shot. The odds were very much in favor of the run ending at 28 points. But you have to stay positive. You know, there are so many pitfalls that can end a run of straight pool. There's so many forces working against you that you need to think of it that if you can just get past one of those pitfalls, you can turn a, another of the hundreds of 28 ball runs that you might score into a longer run. And that's what happened today. I was able to extend the run and actually got 85 points. It's the same with this uh, thin cut shot into the corner pocket that I'm about to shoot. I don't have a fatalistic attitude about it. I have a positive attitude because I know that if I can make this ball, I'm probably going to open the rack pretty well and I can keep shooting. On this particular shot, what I'm focusing on is a center ball hit, and I'm not paying a whole lot of attention to what's going to happen to the cue ball. I just want to put all of my efforts into making sure that I pocket this cut shot. And I think this is an ideal result. Now, how many of you were expecting to see every single ball in the rack area separate and go flying? The reason why they didn't is because the rack had already been disturbed and there were gaps between a lot of balls. So this is a really good lesson when you compare a frozen rack to one that has gaps. Only a frozen rack is going to send balls in every direction when it's struck well. You should never expect a rack that's already been disturbed to open in the same way. I only have one shot to begin, and now I take a walk to look at the rack from the other side, which is something you should do at the beginning of every rack. And what I see is the seven ball can be used to open that cluster, but first the stripe on the left side of the table has to be removed. So I'm playing position to center table so I can shoot that stripe and then come back around to center table to get an angle on the seven ball. You notice that I don't immediately just go shoot the 10, or I'm assuming that stripe is the 10, but I take a look at what angle I need on the seven. This is the line to the pocket. So I know if I come past that line, I'm gonna have an angle to open the cluster. I also know that I've got those two balls up table, which could be considered trouble balls and if I overshoot my position on this shot I'm easily going to have a shot on one of those two balls which is what happened and did you notice that I quickly took a look at the one ball and what angle I would need in order to open up the cluster from the one ball so here I make a decision to shoot both of these up table balls since I'm already there it's better to shoot them both rather than having to come down table open the cluster and then come back up and get the other up table ball so I made sure to get an angle so I can just go one rail, and now I'm checking that angle to go one rail and get on the seven ball to open the cluster.
This looks real good. And notice that I didn't play for a big cut angle. I'm pretty flat on this seven ball, which is what I want. It makes the pocketing of the seven ball a certainty. And notice that I'm looking at the cluster real closely. You don't want to just go slamming into these balls. My cue ball is either going to hit the solid or that stripe at the top of the cluster or both. So I want to judge whether I need to use follow or a stun or draw stroke. If I use follow, my cue ball will probably hit that solid twice and then carom off towards the left. I might get a shot on the three. The three will probably move towards the bottom rail, but I'm worried about a scratch in the lower left corner. If I stun the ball, the cue ball is probably going to stick there, but if I draw it back to center table, I think I have my best chance of getting a shot on another ball. I might even get a shot on that one ball down the rail. And I fail to draw the cue ball, but I get a last minute tap from the three, so I'm still alive. Now, even though I've shot seven balls, uh, the rack is still clustered. I have no break ball, but I've got a chance, and so I'm going to keep fighting. So you see me walking around, looking at the angles, and I see that I can break the rack with this angle on that stripe ball. This is the only option. There are no insurance balls. So it's a real simple shot, but let's put our best effort into getting that angle just right. Notice I don't have a big cut shot on that stripe ball. I just want a shallow angle so that I can control the cue ball more easily. And I'm looking at the carom into that tiny cluster to see what I think is going to happen. I think I'm going to knock that uh, dark ball, maybe it's the eight, into the three and knock it over into break ball position. And again, I just want to draw the cue ball a little bit up to center table. But once again, the plan does not go as I imagined. I'm still alive. I have a couple of shots. And now I'm trying to think about how to get a break ball. I noticed right there, you saw me wave my cue. That was me recognizing that I could use the six ball into the side pocket as a break shot and go two rails behind the rack. But the next thing I notice is if I can bring my cue ball right here, I can shoot that, it looks like the two ball into the bottom left and nudge either the three or the eight into break ball position. So I'm going to make an effort to do that. If it doesn't work out, I know I can go back up and use the six ball as a break shot somehow. So I'm still fighting, even though there's only four balls on the table and I have no break shot. Now I'm really flat on this two ball. I'm, I'm really straight. And so I want to use a stun shot. I want to stun the cue ball forward. I'm trying to get the eight ball to carry him off the three up table and I'm trying to hold the cue ball so it doesn't continue past that point. And once again, the plan does not work out. The three ball went too far. It can't be a break ball. And I'm checking the eight, but my cue ball hit it twice and it's still just barely within the rack, so I can't use that ball. So I've got to use the six for a break ball. That means I'm shooting the three. And what I'm doing now is playing for an angle. I would like to shoot the eight ball in the same pocket as the three and send the cue ball two rails to just past center table to shoot the six. Right there, I'm measuring where I want the six. Now my cue ball went way too far. I'm way too straight on this eight. I wanted a cut shot. You notice that I didn't take a lot of time between shooting the two and shooting the three. If I had taken more time, maybe I would have got a better angle on this eight ball. But I still have a slight cut shot, and I'm going to use a foul stroke with a lot of left English that's going to slow the cue ball down and bring it back up to center table. And I should get the angle I want on the six, except I don't get any left English on the cue ball. And this is just horrible. Right there, I just pointed to where I was trying to get the cue ball. So that rack was a real struggle. And just like the last rack, I butchered my position on the break ball. So now I'm on a 42 ball run. And by all rights, I think the chances are very high that this is the end of the run. So what do I do? Do I just take, make a half-hearted attempt? No, I've got 42 balls under my belt. Let's give this a shot. If, if it doesn't go, if I miss the shot or don't open the rack, I've lost nothing. So rather than being fatalistic, what do I want to do? I want to keep fighting. So you're going to notice that I'm putting a lot of effort into pocketing this ball. I know that if I pocket the six in the lower right corner, the cue ball is going to go two rails behind the rack. 
So look at me stand there behind the shot line to the pocket, and I'm really visualizing this shot line. Once again, I'm not going to put as much effort into controlling the cue ball. I'm just going to stroke it with a nice high follow stroke, nice firm stroke, and I want to make the six ball. And this result is ideal. When you're coming at the rack from the bottom, so often you end up stuck to the side of the rack or underneath it or frozen to the rail and you don't have a shot. So I've got a shot at this ball in the corner and notice that first thing I do is take a walk around the table. And not only am I looking at what angle I need, I probably want an angle on the nine ball to open the rack, but give yourself a moment to breathe. You know, I've just shot my second low percentage break shot, fought my way through a very tough rack. It's important to not just fight, but to stay positive. It's similar to meditation. You know, if something disturbs you while you're meditating, the worst thing to do is to try to ignore it. What you do is acknowledge that the disturbance is there, deal with it, or dismiss it. Then you can return peacefully to your meditation. It's the same thing here. I've been struggling, but I don't want to remain in struggle mode. So I'm acknowledging, I'm, by walking around the table, I'm giving myself a few moments to acknowledge that I've made those tough shots and they're now in the past and I can dismiss them. And now I can put 100% of my efforts into this shot. This is good. I don't have a huge angle on the nine ball, but I'd rather have this shot where I've got a 100% chance of making the ball than a cut shot where I've got a chance of missing it. I know that with a firm follow stroke, my cue ball is going to deflect along the tangent line before it curves forward. So I think I'm going to hit the three ball pretty full, and I shouldn't uh, go to one side of the rack or the other. I should go through it. So I'm going to put a nice firm follow stroke on this ball. And I don't spread the rack real wide, but that works out. For the first time in a rack and a half, I've, or the first time in a rack, half of the balls are loose and there's only half in a cluster. But I want to deal with that cluster right away, even though I've got that one ball as a break ball, or knowing that I have that one ball as a break ball. So I went and checked my angle, and all i got to do is roll this three ball in, and I've got a beautiful inside angle. Just like last week, this is a bread and butter shot, a low angle on a low ball to open up a cluster. And now we're back in business. I started this rack with a recovery break shot. Then I had one shot to set me up for a shot to re-break the rack and then another shot to set me up to open the last cluster on the table. And now we're definitely in business with a wide open table. So I'm thinking in those terms of recovery shots and setups. Set yourself up. Take extra effort to make sure that you get the right angle to set yourself up to open the rack. And that's the process that I've been going through the rack previous to this one and up to this point where I'm in struggling mode, where I'm fighting, continuing to fight to try to keep the run going. So I had a difficult rack and a quarter that allowed me to pro progress the rack from 28 balls to a little over 42 balls. And as I said, I was able to continue and get an 85 ball run. All because I stayed positive and kept putting forth my best effort to execute each shot. Let me know in the comments if you have a story about the time you were able to continue a run or close out a rack or win from an impossible situation by staying positive and keeping up the fight. As always, head over to shortstoponpool.com and check out my book, A Shortstop on Straight Pool. And I'll see you next time at the Rack of the Week.